I've created a lot of content about creating science blogs, you know, whether it's how to choose a topic or where to put them, um, lots of different information, how you write them better, uh, etc. But I haven't actually uh, created like a one-stop shop kind of guide uh, to help you get started for people who are just starting out in science blogging. That is what I wanted to do here. So this is a quick beginner's guide if you're interested in science blogging, this will explain what you need to know to get you know started. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's get into our topic today. The first thing that you should do if you're going to start a science blog or thinking about starting a science blog is think kind of carefully about what is the goal that you're trying to achieve, essentially. Um, this might seem like kind of an obvious thing. It's like, well, I want people to read my blog or share my thoughts or whatever. Um, but that's not kind of sharp enough as a perspective because you need to think more about like, who is this meant to be for? Uh, what is the range of content that you want to cover, etc., like that? Because if you don't have a very clear idea around that, you tend to sort of wander around and touch a lot of different subjects none of which you're able to um, really cleanly uh, deal with systematically and that's what you end up leading to blogs that are less successful. So what should you be thinking about when you're trying to decide your objective? Well it's actually a really hard thing to get really down into the details but we should focus on four points that you should consider. First one is around topic. So what is your topic area focus. Um, are you talking about science generally? It's probably a little bit too broad. Um, are you focusing specifically on like, I don't know, organic chemistry or biophysics or whatever? Like what is the range of topics that you would say you'd fit into? Because if you had a little bit of everything, I think that people would probably not really be attracted or really understand what you're doing. Second, you should think about your audience. Who is this for um, because there are very different audiences of what who you could be writing for. So for instance, my blog is designed for scientists who want to learn how to share their research more effectively. Alternatively, I could have been focusing around marketers who want to learn to sell to scientists because I could I could speak both languages. In my opinion, I wanted to use this space that I have specifically for helping to teach scientists. And uh, that would just have a very different strategy, very different way of thinking about it. Next, you should think about your differentiated value. What is it that's special about your blog that is going to stand out to, for other people? So the uh, for instance, if you are writing around organic chemistry, writing about organic chemistry, um, I don't know the area very well, but I'm sure there are a bunch of blogs on the internet who cover this topic in one way or another. Or if you're writing about like biopharma, it's a great example too. There's a lot of other places people can get updates as to what's happening in the biopharma industry. What is particular about your blog that makes it more interesting, more valuable, more uh, memorable? So if you have like a very you have a good sense of humor and you can tell jokes around this, um, or maybe you have a lot of experience in that field. Maybe that's the angle that you kind of want to work on. Um, so find that differentiated value of how your work stands out and, and what makes it better than the competition in the area. Alternatively, if you're really covering a field that really nobody else is writing about, which is po possible in the sciences, because there's a lot to, to talk about there, um, you, you might be able to find that green you know, field, that open uh, blue ocean essentially to, to cover, but it'll be challenging. So think about that idea of, um, you know, what are you giving to this that's better than than other folks. You should also think about like, what is your objective of what you're trying to get out of this? Um, are you happy to just share your thoughts with the world? Maybe um, build an email list or you just, you don't want to maybe practice your writing. If that's all you're trying to do, like fine. No, like don't worry about things here. But if you want to drive business results, like if you want to start a consultancy or you want to, you know, get into the marketing field or whatever, maybe you want to think about what what, how your blog should be structured to work towards that objective because that'll make um, some differences uh, there of like where you set it up, what are the topics that you cover, how do you structure your website, if you put it on a website, etc. So there's a lot to think about there and I would really advise you, you know, do a good job of trying to think about this and, and come up with some ideas initially. Don't be afraid to come back to this and change it as you move forward in your blogging journey. It should really be something that um, you, you believe in and don't just stick to it just because you said that that's what you were gonna do when you first started out and you didn't know what you were doing. Um, but it does really make a big difference in the success of your blog. So I would strongly recommend to at least give it a good think before you set things up. 
that transitions nicely into our next topic, which is setting things up. Where are we going to put our blog? So there are three main options to consider. Medium, which is a blogging network, uh, newsletters, and uh, actual like a personal website. Medium is a website where you can uh, sign up. It's free to sign up, though there's a paid version as well. Um, you can uh, get started pretty easily uh, for it. Now, the details of how the site works does get complicated. Um, I have a whole post around all of these uh, options. Go read that if you're interested in learning more. But basically, I would say that the, the, the two second version of it is um, it's really easy to get started on that um, site, uh, though as you're growing, it becomes more complicated. And But that might be a good excuse to leave as you get um, more comfortable with your writing. But anyway, that's what Medium is. Newsletters are good for people who already have a lot of connections or a lot of um, uh, followership on the internet already. I really wouldn't advise it for somebody who is kind of just getting started and this is their first foray into writing for the internet, but it can be okay if you have um, you know, particularly timely kind of uh, content to share there or if you have an established following uh, of, of any sort. Three is a personal website. The way that I describe personal websites is one, it's easier to set up than you probably think that it is if you haven't done this before, but it is substantially harder than the other two. Um, I set up my first website sites when I didn't have any coding experience whatsoever, so you don't need to worry about that. I have a little bit of coding experience now, and I have a website that I got some help to make, but it's not, um, you know, it's really not that hard to get started with a basic website without any of that background, though it costs a little bit of money. Um, definitely something that I would consider more if I was a little bit more advanced in it, but for the beginners, beginners, I would pretty strongly recommend just stick to, to Medium as a place to get your feet wet, to try things out, to learn to write on the internet. Now that you were set up, it is time to get writing. My process of writing kind of covers five steps. So the first one is do a bunch of research. Do more research than you think you probably need. It really helps for rounding out the topic area and be more confident in what you're talking about and making sure that you structure your ideas well. Um, two, structure your article ahead of time. Um, so you have the different pieces lined up in terms of knowing where your ideas will sort of fit uh, and that that'll help, I think, uh, in terms of like when you come up with an idea, you're writing something like, oh yeah, I want to cover this, you know, this this idea came to me, but maybe it's better fits in this other section so I can start like moving it down there or you can start thinking about like, oh, well, this section is actually turning to be a little bit long. So maybe I have to split this one up and merge with the next section. So have that sketch out ahead of time. It'll help you, I think, quite a lot in, in the writing. It's something that I find uh, super helpful in, in what I, uh, in I write, when I write. Next, just go write. <laughs> you know, put that, put the uh, fingers on the keyboard, etc. Hit, the, you know, as many as keys as you need to <laughs> to get that done. Um, but that is, uh, uh, of course, the the next step. Which uh, I have some other guides, and other videos and stuff that can help you more on that that process. Uh, then you have editing, um, which I think is super important. I'm a really big believer in editing. Uh, so take the time to do that. Do it yourself. Um, get machine editors involved too. That is a, a helpful uh, thing to help elevate your work if you don't have anybody else to help you. Um, then also uh, work with a, another editor as well if you can. I'm somebody who is available to hire for editing if you're interested in that, but uh, it's probably not relevant for everybody who's uh, just getting started. Do, spend the time, do the editing, do a good job there, and then you should actually post your work so put it into whatever um, content system you're you're using whether it's medium or, or your newsletter make sure that you have some visuals as well uh, those are a pretty helpful important part like just have something at least because uh, when you show links on the internet you're gonna have at least one um, visual kind of like displayed often when there's a link you know connected to it so make sure you have at least one image per post and then that image would be one that makes sense for like identifying the post, not just like a graph or something like that. But then to, but beyond that, take the time to do a good job with your figures and your graphs and everything like that, because those are a really vital part of a lot of good blogs. Like a good um, you know, graph, a good XY scatter plot can just like make or break, you know, a scientific blog post. So you're done, right? You put it up on the your newsletter, you put it up on your website, whatever, you know, you're finished. Why is there still more in this video? Um, it's, you're not actually done. You have to distribute your content. You have to share your blog. You're in on the internet. People are always fighting for everybody else's attention. People aren't gonna just like naturally gravitate to the work that you write. So go out and find places to share it. Social media is an obvious one. If you have 
any following whatsoever. Like I'm talking about like double digits is still fine. Like go share it, get used to sharing um, your writing in contexts like that. I would not go with paid um, measures now, um, especially when you're like first, first starting. There's a lot to, that goes into that um, and it gets more complicated. So while it might feel like naturally, hey, I spent, you know, four hours on, you know, eight hours writing this blog post, um, why wouldn't I promote it using, you know, 10, 20 bucks worth of money? Like, don't do that. It actually will cause more problems than than you think um, in in the long run. So, so don't do that. There's some search engine optimization uh, type uh, information there, very broad topic. But for now, I would just kind of suggest for you to not really focus on it that, that much, uh, especially if you're first starting. I, I strongly recommend for beginners, just don't focus on much of the complexities beyond writing the post, putting it up on the internet, and then sharing it a little bit with your social network. As you get better, you can get to the search engine optimization stuff. Once that is up, it is time to start measuring. Actually, it's not time to start measuring. You should wait a little while and then start measuring your results. Uh, when you first write stuff, you probably should expect it to get very little views. Um, like I'm talking, you know, if you get 100 views in your first month, you should be really happy with yourself if that's your, like, your first piece. Um, you know, like keep your standards really low. Uh, this is something that's gonna take a little while to, to build up. This goes back a little bit to the search engine optimization point uh, that you need to build up a little bit of a reputation and authority in an area before you're going to really be recognized for that and start getting the traffic that, that uh, um, is connected to that. So be, you know, be just tenacious, you know, put the, the effort into doing it on a regular basis, uh, put content out on your website or, or, or blog um, of, of uh, um, like the Medium page or, uh, or newsletter uh, for a little while and hope that it sort of builds up over time. And I think you'll kind of see that that happens, especially as your writing skills get better. Um, be patient, but then, but do monitor it and see how things are going and try to find what are the themes, what are the styles, what are the, the, the content that is attracting the most visitors, and then build on that success as you're going forward. That'll be it though. That'll cover all of the basics of getting started on your first science blog. Uh, there's obviously a lot more to it. There's going to be a ton of links in the description. Check all of those out for more information about some of the, the themes that I hit on here. Um, but I wanted to just kind of summarize everything up into one you know, quick little package to put it out there in case this was something that would be useful for some folks who are just getting started. If you do want a more in-depth explainer though, let me know and I will um, think about putting together like a longer video that is a much more you know, structured, in-depth, like goes into all of these different parts in, in a more holistic overall kind of way. So that'd be something that I might I might put together sometime um, in the medium term future. So let me know if that'd be something that you'd be interested in. Um, but that'll be it though. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care folks.